Yes, this is the Trek Slash 7, and in today's episode, I'm gonna run through why I got this bike and all the specs that come with it. So yes, I finally bought a full suspension hardtail. It's a pretty burly one at that. It's not like an entry level trail. It's a full enduro bike. And today I'm firstly gonna go over why I bought it. And then secondly, the components that come with it. But before we get into today's episode, if you're new to my channel, I am Dan and I like to escape on my bikes and do various other adventures. If that's something you're interested in, then please do hit that like button and subscribe to my channel as I appreciate it and it helps out so much with this channel. So about a year and a half ago, I bought the Vita Sentia VR 27.5. It's a hardtail mountain bike. And if you wanna see that video, you can hit the top link. I don't know which side it will be. I've been riding it a lot. And over that time, I figured out what I like about mountain biking and what I don't like. So for me, cross country wasn't a big thing. And I was more into going downhill, hitting some jumps and going to bike parks. So if you watch my Trek Rail video where I went to a demo day and got to test it out at Swinney Forest, I also borrowed a Slash. I really loved it. I rode it around the trails, it climbed really well, went downhill so nicely and I just really enjoyed having that full suspension and it felt nice to hit in the jumps. If you do find a demo day, in particular any brand that you like, then try and get down and try one of their bikes out and see how it feels first before committing to one. So why the Slash 7? It's the entry level bike in the whole Slash lineup. It goes all the way into carbon range which can go up to 12 grand. This one is the aluminium version. I just wanted a bike that I can grow with and change components as I got better and better. Because I'm still learning a mountain biking, I didn't want to go higher up the range because I was like, well, one, I don't want to come bike. Two, they're expensive. Three, I'm still learning, so I'm probably going to break it. So yeah, that's why I settled with the entry level. Also, the next one up, the eight, came with SRAM parts and I've only ridden Shimano. I've talked to a few people saying they prefer Shimano over SRAM. I know it's like Marmite, you either love it or you hate it, but I wanted to stay with uh, Shimano and that's why I went with the Slash 7 because it came with all Shimano components. So as for going for a enduro bike over a trail bike or a downhill bike, so downhill bikes, it's not really worth getting in the UK unless you live near a bike park and that's something that you're gonna be doing a lot of the time. Um, trail bike, I knew I wanted to hit more bike parks and rough stuff, so that's why I settled with this bike because it's got a longer travel on both the front suspension and the rear suspension, and I knew it could take those big hits, and also I can take it to bike parks where I can hit bigger jumps and progress with it. So I thought I'd jump in right here and tell you what size frame I bought. According to Trek's uh, size chart, I'm five foot eight and I should be riding a ML, medium long, medium large, I'm not really sure what it, the L stands for, um, but I decided to go with a medium frame, so I think the height for that was 5.7 max. Uh, I just preferred the smaller frame, I guess coming from a 27.5 and then going to a 29er felt quite a big jump up, so yeah, I felt really comfortable on it. I test rode it in a medium as well and also an ML and just preferred the medium, so yeah. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about the components of the bike and I'm gonna start off with the front and work my way slowly to the back. So it comes with this nice big cockpit. I think the standout thing for me was it came with a 35 mil length stem. It is probably more of a basic stem. You can upgrade this later if you wanted to. I know Bontrager do their own one that works well with knot block, um, but I'll get into knot block in a bit. The bars are like, I think they're line 35 bars. So they're aluminium. Uh, they came at 820 mils. I've cut them down already. so. They're now down to 795 millimeters. I think on the Vitus I was running 780. I didn't. I was thinking of cutting them down when they originally came, but I didn't. One of the things I already upgraded on here were the grips. Um, I did try out the ones, the Bontrager ones that came with them. Um, I didn't like them as much. Uh, they felt really nice to grip, but when I was riding trails, they didn't feel that comfy for me. It might work for you personally, but I went back to my good old default DMR death grips and yeah I love these ones you know just the mushroom effect at the top and then you've got extra grip on the bottom as well so obviously running Shimano hydraulic disc brakes and yeah uh, these are the standard levers I got the same ones on my Vitus I 
They're cool, but I prefer one finger braking. So maybe that's something I'll upgrade later. But so far it doesn't bother me. And also I don't want to be spending too much on changing components because obviously I'm still learning. If I crash, I don't want to break them. So if I do, I'd probably just go with a Shimano Dior one fingers. It does come with an SLX shifter. My other one came with just a Shimano Dior. One thing I would say, it's not integrated onto the brake levers, which I have on my Vitus. People would say upgrade to an XT. SLX is fine, it's a 12 speed shifter and I like it, it feels really comfortable. I think by moving it under the brake lever will bring it close to my hands because it's a bit uncomfortable to move at the moment when trying to go down the gears. Next thing is the thumb lever for the dropper post. It is right here. Feels really good, um, really nice to pull and it's quite a smooth dropper post compared to my last one so it's an upgrade there. The next thing I'm going to talk about is knock block. So it's built into the headset, um, it's right here and it stops the bars from rotating fully around. If you can see it just stops there, it's dead stop. And that's to help with if you do crash that you're not going to rip out cables and the bars are going to turn around. This has knock block 2.0 which allows you to get rid of knock block if you don't want it there. So that's pretty handy if that's something that puts you off having the knock block on there. Here we have these RockShock Yari forks. Um, to be honest I'm not too clued up on forks and that's why I wasn't too fussed about going up a set because I was just like well these would be pretty decent for myself and obviously as I get used to forks and learn what feels better and what feels great then I can upgrade these later. Um, these have 170 millimeter of travel. Um, my Vitus had 140 mil so it's a big step up from there and also the biggest thing is having 29 inch wheels. As I'm going to be doing harder faster stuff rougher terrain the 29ers will be a bit better rolling over that stuff making it like a monster truck over those obstacles so that's why 29 is the way to go so the wheels it's running are the line comp 35 just an aluminium wheel uh, the tires on here are the Bontrager XR5 team issues um, they're 2.5 width I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with these I'm going to see how they go also it's running 2.5 in the back and I want to be running maybe a 2.4 in the back and then 2.5 up front for that grip. But the biggest upgrade is having a 203 millimeter rotor. Um, I think on the Vitus it was either 180 or 160, I can't remember. And also four piston caliper brakes. Um, these aren't the top of the range brakes. I think they're the entry level Shimano Dior ones with um, four piston calipers, but that is a much welcome upgrade to help me stop on those steep declines. So here we have the main frame, obviously a full sus suspension bike. It is made from Trex Platinum Alpha Aluminum. Aluminum, why do I see, keep saying aluminum? Just because it's an American brand. Aluminium, aluminium. So it's their highest grade aluminium, which is pretty cool. Uh, the color is kind of, it's supposed to be like an olive green, but in certain different lights, it looks goldish, which I quite like about it. It's, it's, it's nice, it's got a little sparkle to it, which I really like. But the biggest thing about this frame is it has control freak cabling. So all the cables go inside here and then they'll flush out. So the only external bits are here and when you get towards the back end, which I think is really cool. On my Vitus, the cables were exposed and I wasn't really a big fan of that. The other cool thing is the frame has integrated storage. So you can remove this and in here there is a bag to carry a flat kit so you can carry like a spare inner tube. I don't know if you'll be able to fit a full mountain bike tube in here because of how thick they are. You might have to strap it up or get one of those tubalitos which you can fit in here which might roll down to a small component but you can definitely fit a pump, some multi-tools, even some energy bars or like a chocolate bar which is pretty neat and yeah it's nice because it just slides down there and then you know, you still got room to have some snacks and also it comes with a side loader bottle cage which is pretty handy because obviously if you've got a top loader you just won't be able to get out so side loader is pretty handy so you can fit a small enough bottle in there which is pretty decent. So the biggest change in terms of the bike is obviously this rear shock here. Um, this is a 
Rockshock Deluxe Select Plus, Devon Air, so obviously Airshock, Airsprung. This one actually comes with 160 mil of travel. I forgot to mention that the forks can be upgraded to 180 mil. I think this one can only stay at 160. It's got a lock function, so the lockout's here, and then you can adjust the rebound on this red dial. I'm excited to see what else it can handle and throw at it and see what happens later on once I start to understand more about rear shocks and where I can upgrade from there. I think you can put a spring coil shock in there. Let me know in the comments below what kind of upgrades would you make to this? What kind of rear shock would you put in? What front suspension would you put in? That'd be handy to know as well. Coming to the drivetrain, so the first bit, the chain ring and the crank set. This is actually running the Shimano SLX. When I looked at the specs online about ordering this bike, it said it came with Shimano Dior, so for some reason it's come with SLX, which is a much welcomed upgrade. One thing I forgot to mention on the frame is it's got a rubber guard around here, so like a plate to protect any like debris hitting off on the frame and causing scratches. It also has bolts, so you can put a bash guard on here if you wanted to, and a chain guard, uh, chain guide. The other upgrade is up on the top here. You won't be able to see it from this angle, but I'll show you some close-ups. This has a minnow link, which for people who don't know, it means you can turn the link around and it can either run in a high or low setting. And by doing that, I think if it's in the high setting, don't quote me on this, it brings the geometry slightly higher. So it will reduce the slack of the head angle and either bring up the bottom bracket. And then if you run it in the low setting, it will lower the bottom bracket and also make the head angle a bit slacker. So in terms of the seat tube with this frame, they've made it steeper, so it helps with those very steep climbs. Uh, no, I felt really comfortable climbing on this bike compared to the Vitus in terms of their seat tube angle. Um, obviously with the dropper post here, you've got 150 mm of travel. It's a Trans-X one, um, lovely. And also it's so smooth with the dropper, with the lever. Um, you can kind of control the ascent and you can either have it come up really fast or kind of push on the thumb slowly and it will slowly ascend. One thing, the saddle, it's the Arvada, I think, Bontrager, Arvada. Um, I haven't found it that comfortable at the moment, so that may be something that I'll switch out later if I can be bothered. Um, but to be honest, I haven't done much climbing with it yet and done a long trail with it. So when I do do that, I'm gonna really test it there. What I forgot to mention is also I upgraded the pedals. Um, obviously they don't come with pedals and if they do, it's usually the cheap plastic ones. Uh, so I put my DMR bolts, I took them off my Vitus and put them on here. Great pedals, love them, been running with them for a while now. So finishing up in the back end of the bike, we have the rear mech, which is a Dior XT, which is a pretty big upgrade, obviously being a 12 speed. Um, Dior XT being, Second from highest in the Shimano range. Obviously the next one up is XTR, but that's really expensive. What's quite nice on the back end is it has a really good robust chain guard here. It's rubber and it covers the whole of it all the way up to here and even underneath. So it's, you know, your frame is fully protected from the chain slapping against here. It also comes with a 12 speed cassette. I was used to the 11 speed, but this has a 10 to 51 plenty of gears there to climb up any steep incline. Also, what's quite a great upgrade on this is it has a rapid 108 drive. So listen to that. That means it's got six points of engagement. Uh, usually they come with three and a hub at the entry levels and I've managed that. So this one comes with six pulls. So it means that when you're putting down power, you've got full engagement going up those hills. Also, it comes with a 180 in the rear, again, with the Shimano four calipers, and you've got the Lion Comp 30 wheels and the XL5 2.5. Like I mentioned, I might switch these out to a 2.4 and just experiment with what tires work best for me and my riding. But yeah, that's it for all the components on this Slash 7. So yeah, that's my little video about the Slash 7 and why I got it and all the components that come with it. I have actually ridden this bike before making this video. I took it to Windhill Bike Park and did a little training course on my birthday. So that was pretty fun to take that out. If you saw my Instagram reels, I posted a video of me riding this there and it was pretty fun and 
it put a big smile on my face. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think of my purchase? Do you think it's a good one, bad one? You know, I'm open to negativity, so hit me. Hopefully I'm gonna be taking this to Bike Park Wales soon, and also I'm gonna be riding Roadgate again. So that one I might, before I sell my Vitus, I wanna do a comparison of what it's like riding the 27.5 hardtail versus a 29er full suspension enduro bike down those rough routes at Roadgate. But yeah, that's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed it, then please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as it helps a lot and I appreciate it so much. Hope you're staying safe, staying positive, having fun, and I shall see you in the next one.